Mm. Well, hello, good morning. Um, my name is Derek Davis, um, and I'm from Lely Atlantic. And I'm joined here today by um, Peter and Richard Burbage um, from Oakfield Farm in Northamptonshire. And um, they are Lely Vector customers. Um, gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, first of all, I would just love to hear your side of how did you get down the journey of getting into Vector? What did you do before? <clears throat> and actually, what made the decision to take Vector? So originally, it was possibly by chance that we stumbled into the Vector. We're perfectly happy with the system we're using. We're feeding... So we've got 260 autumn calving suckler cows and 50 spring calving suckler cows. We finish everything from the farm. Our focus is on forage-based diets. Every, the, the bulls are left entire and they're going at between 13 and 15 months. Everything that we don't keep for replacements are finished. And again, the focus is from forage. We historically have fed everything with a TMR, grass-based with maize um, and sometimes whole crop depending on the season. We are finishing everything um, with the heifers up to sort of 18 months old. And yeah, we sort of looked at the vector system by chance because we just were initially looking to change our feeder wagon from a 13 cube to a 20 cubic meter uh, feeder wagon. But we've probably, with a focus of getting everything fed as quickly and efficiently as possibly we possibly could. Yeah, so a morning routine for us would be with the 13 cube mixer. Pete would tend to do most of the stock work down here, me on the other farm, and trying to just be as efficient as we possibly could be. Shutting pens back, we then, uh, we've got access to scrape the passageways, bed down, and then we feed. But because we'd be doing sort of five or six mixes in a day, we tended to find that when you started look, letting the cattle back out into the pens, there was a lot of competition at the feed fence. Um, we'd got cows that are coming through, possibly a little bit of bullying, but also, because of how many mixes we were doing, it was taking probably two and a half hours. So you'd always have cattle that were waiting to be fed. Um, from that, we started to look at bigger mixer wagons so that we could feed more pens in one go and in our minds be more efficient. But then when we actually sat down and started looking at it, we were probably creating inefficiencies because we were trying to generically feed a standard ration to animals that probably didn't want a standard ration. Um, we, yeah, we spoke to the nutritionist about actually creating a diet that was a broad spectrum really that covered our heifers and our cows and, um, and to a degree our finishing heifers on one mix and really that was the wrong thing to do. We were small, smaller mixes more, and more often feeding would have been better but we didn't have the time to do that and to implement that. Mm. Um, we try and use our time efficiently, we have other business interests that we try and do and time is quite precious to us. So this, um, which again has led us down the route of the looking at the vector system. And the more we looked at it, we were quite, um, quite pragmatic. We were trying to talk ourselves in and out of it, of a, of a sensible system and how to make it work. And truthfully, we, um, we had a lot of discussions about it, whether we could make it work or whether we couldn't. But it was really interesting when Andy Wilson from Laley came down to see us. Initially, just the whole cost of the infrastructure and the robots just seemed farcical, really, that we couldn't justify it. But when you started to break it down with, we're pretty good with our figures anyway through the nature of what we're doing. But when you broke down the diesel use, the labor, the machinery, and then just the general time, and the fact of what we could do with that time if we were freed up, it stacked up straight away, the figures made sense. I don't think anyone realizes the cost of these things until you start to really look into it and focus on it. And me and Richard says we'd be quite good with our figures. But when you actually look into how much fuel you're using to mix and to feed and to do the different jobs you're doing, I think it's quite astounding at how much you, it actually costs. And bear in mind, a lot of these figures were put together when fuel was still at well, below 60 pence a litre. Um, granted, electricity's gone up, but pro rata, the fuel would still come in at more, be more expensive. Labour is always an issue, and that's something that you, whether you've got good staff or not, you've got to try and look after them. So it's just creating that flexibility. And yeah, the figures, we did the classic. We started to cut what we thought it would cost us to feed our cows. You know, if it was taking two and a half hours a day, we would say, well, let's work it out an hour and a half, or let's cut our fuel use. It was almost a classic farming thing, but the vector still, st still stood up. It still came up over and above where we were on the figures on the feeder wagon. 
plus the logistics of the, of the bigger mixer wagons. It was more weight. We had to look at whether we were specking them with steering axles, whether that was going to affect our yards because some of our concrete might not have been thick enough. Um, so all of those things came into it. And yeah, then we made the conscious decision to go for the robots. And to be honest, all the benefits that we saw initially of, well, it's doubled really. Yeah, there's lots of things that we would struggle to quantify in a monetary terms in what benefits yeah. they've bought in that if you fed an animal in the morning, uh, at, if you're feeding your animals in the morning and there was a percentage of food left, you wouldn't, we wouldn't as a business not feed those animals. We'd probably feed them a percentage less, but we'd be putting food on top of food. And at the end of the week, that would create a problem from excess food that would heat up and we would then end up taking away from the feed passageway. So we'd be scraping them out sweeping the passageways out. Vector has brought lots of benefits to that in that we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, I think they're the things that now you take for granted that we're always doing. So the feed will be pushed up twice a day, technically, because whatever the residue was left in the morning, you'd probably either push up or you'd be scraping out, um, which is a waste of feed. The traffic down our feed passageway, we've got loaders that are doing multiple jobs. They're going around the yards, they're scraping out, we're loading straw into um, straw spreaders, etc. So then when we're going down the feed passageways, we're taking muck you know, from the rest of the yards. Well, we don't have that anymore. The only traffic going down our feed passageways is the robot. They're all things that we hadn't even considered. Um, but going back to that, so pushing the silage up twice a day, in the evenings, to a degree, we were trying to control the intakes of our cows because we're on a suckler system, autumn calving. They've got a lot of draw off their backs, but we feed them well through a TMR. Um, and we were trying to hold them back a little bit. That was one of our fears with the robot, that actually having access to free food all day long, they would eat more. But in truth, I think they've probably eaten a little bit less. I think um, it's better from the point that they don't sort now, whereas historically, yeah. if you put straw into a mix, and you leave them to clean up and then push up twice a day, they were sorting for it. They don't get the opportunity to sort anything Absolutely. now. It's pushed up to them every hour and the food's kept in front of them. And actually they don't eat any more at all. They probably just are fed better. And like Richard said, it's not the competition for the feed fence that there was. They, they're eating more consistently. The food's kept up cleaner. They clean up better so the food's fresher. And feeding smaller mixes um, to each pen and feed them as they want, then it's, it's just a much better system for us now. We Timeliness, feed, using better use of our time. The focus now is when the cows are scraped down and bedded down, our focus then is to walk through the yards um, every morning to make sure everything's healthy and as it should be. You don't, you're not under a time pressure now to do that because the feeding's been done by the, by the robot. And there isn't the classic rush to the feed fence either when you open the gates up. You know, and we've increased the stocking density in our pens slightly, not, not massively. Purely but because of feed fence. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there isn't the feed fence pressure. So uh, that stress on animals. Absolutely. It just disappears. And I, I suppose as well, with um, no sorting of food, I suppose the ration is more balanced in what she takes in every day. Because if there's nothing left, because your nutritionist has, you've invested in your nutritionist to do your ration, the cow is eating everything. I think, I think you, you have the, the matriarch cows in the herd, don't you? And they go to the feed fence first. Yeah. They would be the ones that get the best bite of the cherry, as it were. And we don't get any of that anymore. It's, it's, it's much more... The, yard, the yards and the feed fences are much quieter. So the consistency of mix as well. A classic, we're, we like to think we're efficient with our time, but in truth, obviously, there's always improvements to be made. But we would put a mix on and then go and shut cows back. So... We can set alarms on our phones, you know, to try and time ourselves. But in truth, you wouldn't stick to it religiously because if you're halfway up a yard shutting cows back, it'll potentially mix for an extra five minutes. Yeah. Or if you get back to the wagon and you're five minutes early, you would probably tend to feed because there is that time pressure. And again, add on to that, that we've got groups of cows that in theory, you want to be feeding more separate rations. Yeah. That's exactly the opposite to what we were trying to achieve with a bigger wagon, whereas now, to, be, to feed every pen individually, you can be as inefficient on our time as you like because the robot's doing it for us. You know, it's got all day to do it. It mixes consistently every single time within a very, very small percentage. Whereas in truth, if we go to the feeder wagon and we want 800 kilos of maize, for example, and we end up putting a thousand in, you've then got to try and quickly in your head 
calculate that different ration, which we're never going to be perfect. And what if you do that and then you end up putting another 200 kilos of grass in over and above? And, you know, it's, it, it never ends. So yeah, the robot never has that. It always gives you consistency. And I do believe, I don't think it matters how good you think you are, you're not going to do it as well as the, as the robot does. And the logistics of our farm with where our clamps are and where our concentrates are, where we keep our straw, the robot will introduce say for example 50 kilos of grass 50 kilos of maize a little bit of blend then it will start the process again till it finishes the mix whereas we're never going to do that we will block we'll put the straw in first yeah. and then maybe put the maize on top to try and get a mix then you've got to guess how long you're going to be before the straw's chopped enough again going back to the, mon the quantifying the monetary terms it's really difficult to know how much time you spend running around the yard trying to feed the mixer wagon up and creating mess around the yard and dropping silage and maize and, and potentially blend whereas for us now we just feed the kitchen once a week if you really wanted to, but usually twice a week. Um, our yard's much less traffic, it's much calmer, our feed passageway is exactly the same. It is a much calmer environment that we feel on our, on our farm. And going back to the animal, the time spent with the animals, they're definitely, from, from our farming practices, they're definitely healthier. Because if there is a problem and you pick it up earlier, you can treat that animal so much sooner and not have the problems going forward with potentially pneumonia or anything like that. So I feel for us, it's, it's definitely allowed us to manage our animals better with the time we've got. It's, a, it's just an extra member of staff that's dedicated to feeding your stock. So that's adding a lot of value to the business. Absolutely, and again, difficult to quantify in monetary terms, but we feel it's worked very well for ourselves and it's fitted into what our business model very well, yeah. The, um, there's a lot of data um, collected by robots. Yeah. With the vector feeding and the data it feeds back, because you will have different rations going into different groups of animals, is that, is that helping you make management decisions even quicker yeah. to yeah. aid the business going forward? Most definitely. Yes. And a, a case in point for us would be we, you come to the vector and it gives you figures instantly of what the animals are costing per day. We weigh our finishing cattle regularly and we can now harvest the data that the vector gives us instantly and when we're weighing our finishing animals we can look at the data and if those animals aren't performing to the level that we feel they should be, we can make that decision there and then whether they stay or whether they go. Um, and we've, we've always had that data and we've all that, had that information, we've always discussed yeah. it but now we can react to it so much quicker um, and we even... would, yeah, we would do that. We have always done that historically, but it allows... But it's been harder to do. Yeah, that's right. It's, you know, we collect our data, but correlating it all together and making sense of it takes time. And it's something that we do constantly do, whereas now it's there, it's on the screen. And if you change a ration instantly, the moment you've programmed it in and you've put the cost in, it's there. It's recalculated it and you know exactly what it's costing you to feed per head per day. So you can make those decisions so much quicker. So, um, Simon, you're the nutritionist here, and um, obviously we've had a good morning here talking about the vector and what have you. From a nutritionist side of things, with what the vector can do and what you've seen it do, the data it collects, how accurate you can feed animals, what effect does that have on your job? Does it make it easier for you to formulate rations for the exact needs of animals? I mean, to me, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, it, it's been a revelation, really, in terms of the guys, particularly here, spend an awful lot of time in making top quality forage. The, the remit when I started working with Pete and Rich probably two, two and a half years ago was, you know, we want, we've got top, top genetics, top animals, we can make top forage, we want top performance, but it's got to be done from that homegrown, homegrown source, which is absolutely right and correct. So we, make, we spend time making that top quality forage and we then spend a lot of time and effort and money analysing it, being able to formulate the right balance ration for each, each type and class of livestock. So therein straight away becomes one opportunity for compromise. So I want to categorise the different animals into where we're trying to take each individual type, whether it's a speed of finish, whether it's a, a growth stage, whether it's a dry cow, um, but obviously that determines making lots of different rations potentially to be able to target that, um, to target that, that animal correctly. Obviously we then balance those um, with formulating the diets 
Um, but then the next little compromise and challenge can be, well, does that actual diet get entered into that feeder wagon accurately? Um, and I'm, I'm confident here it, was, it is done 99 times out of 100, but if these guys ever have a day off, who knows whether that is continued mm. in the same vein. If it's not mixed correctly or it's not discharging accurately, we're, we're just opening up the chances for animals to sort and not probably consume the ration that we've spent ages accurately formulating. So, and so having gone through that, having that confidence then that the ration is being for, that has been formulated is actually being fed to the cow, um, if then we can then monitor the data and if, if ever Pete or Richard ever ring me up and say, well, we're not quite happy with the performance, the growth rates of, of these, or, or we're not quite happy with where they're going. My next question is, are they, what are they eating? You know, are they actually eating one portion per one animal? Mm -hmm. and, and again, with the data that comes out of the vector, it's pretty obvious to answer that question. Because so often in, in my other, with other clients, I find that animals aren't performing as we expect. And when you actually delve into the data, they're only eating 85% of the diet that we think they're eating, or they're eating 125% of the diet. And as you say, that, that has implications from a cost perspective, but also it usually ends up in a, in a recipe for the animals not performing as, uh, as desired. Well, we've got the data. Quickly, we can, have, we can, have, we can make real-time decisions, and, and within a matter of minutes, the, the vector can be going out actually delivering the newly formulated diet. One of the biggest challenges I have on, on a lot of my farms is getting the number of push-ups done with to, yeah. the, to the ration and it's yes we know it, the common answer I get is yes I know that should be what we should be doing but we haven't got the staff we haven't got the time or do you know how much that costs in terms of diesel well again with the vector I mean you know I, I advocate on, on a, on a non-vector system we should be pushing that feed up at least eight times a day in a 24-hour period well obviously here that that is happening far and away above that eight times which has only got to be great yeah, so at the moment it's just doing its pre-programmed route because this shed's empty um, all the stock are out we've just pr programmed in a different route so now it'll follow its way down there it's one thing getting a mix on but then feeding it is part of it as well and getting it accurate all the way down the fence line yeah. whereas this it's perfect if you're feeding a 60 foot feed fence it's accurate from the first foot to the last bit at 60 foot it's That's... perfectly spread out when it's at the end of a mix it will spin the rotors yeah. extra fast, spin all the forage off just so it's clear. So now the, the way it works at the moment, it, when it crosses an open space, it's going to follow the steel tracks that are set in. Yeah. When it picks up onto a fence, it's got a, um, an ultrasound that picks up on the, our feed passageways on our, on our slatted barriers, and that's how it follows its way along. So it keeps a certain distance, so it's always pushing the silage up accurately. I think it's that the, the consistency all the yeah. time. It's consistently doing the same thing, which we as a species would find boring, but as a machine, it's, it's it. yeah. The more consistency, the better. Yeah. I don't really see a negative in a vector in our system and what we're doing, from demands of time to flexibility of feed and to doing the job as well as we possibly can. But financially speaking, yes, it's a large capital investment. I'm not going to shy away from that at all. It is. Um, we enjoy what we do, you get satisfaction out of doing something well and the better you can do it, the more satisfied you are and the more profitable you are, yeah. in our view. Vector fits into that category for us. Um, as I say, I don't think I can see a negative for us. And truthfully, if anyone's got a system that would that's set up similar to how we are, I don't think there is a negative. No, I mean, I think the, I mean, the accuracy that we've said earlier, the accuracy, the, the, the attention to detail and ability to deliver a multiple different diets to the right animal and know the confidence that the diet is being delivered and actually fed and consumed by that animal exactly as it's written down and has been formulated. To me, it's fantastic and you've got real-time data and real-time mm. feedback. Would I go around every single one of my clients advising they have one? Every, there's no two farms the same and the infrastructure and the layout would decree whether it is, flex, is, is correct or achievable or not. But yeah, I mean, it, it's Excellent. great. And for here, it's been, it's been brilliant to work with. Right, I think that um, brings us to the end of um, this morning's uh, bit of filming and um, the time we've spent here. Um, certainly from my point of view and certainly from Lely as well, a huge, huge thank you 
to you both and to Simon, nutritionist as well, for coming here today and talking to us about Vector. But um, from my point of view, exceptionally proud that you're part of Lely because you certainly are. And um, the way you manage the business, the vision you have going forward is quite unique. And I just hope that farmers take a good message from the time we've spent with you this morning. So a huge, huge thank you to you. Thank no, you thank very much. You. Thank you. Much appreciated.